Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. So uh, you're here to tell us about the teapot, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? All right, yeah, so the teapot um, is currently kind of undergoing some changes, but it's a solo TTRPG. It's a journaling game. Um, it uses the Lost and Found system. So if you're familiar with Artifact or a Bucket of Bolts, it uses the same general principles, except about a teapot. Um, in it, you're playing as this kind of semi-sentient and magical um, teapot who's able to take the kind of latent magical properties of different tea and herbs and spices and turn it into a magical, potent little drink. Um, yeah. You basically play as this teapot. You kind of go between different infusers or people who can use this magic and cross different... It can be a couple of years. It could be a couple of centuries. It depends on the choices you make until you settle down. Cool. So you uh, kind of go through like prompts, you know, uh, asking questions about about the people that you meet. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of uh, you start off by with your creator, the kind of imp important person who imprints a lot of your personality almost on you, and then yeah, you're picked up. And you decide how this looks, but it gives you some prompts of like how you're picked up by your next uh, infuser, and if there's different prompts for each of them, kind of get you thinking about your relationship with the world and the world's relationship with you and your new infuser. Which also makes it like a, a handy kind of world world building tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's purposely very outside of the simple facts that tea is magical, that there are teapots that are semi sentient and magical beings, and there are people who can manipulate this magic for whatever purposes. It's it's actually really kind of up to the to player. So I've had people doing like kind of high fantasy political dramas thrown in. I've had, you know, or probably the way you know I've played it, where it's a little more calm and just reflective and social stuff. It really depends on what you're interested in in that moment. Yeah. So uh, what what kind of people uh, often end up with this teapot? <laughs> Depends. So over the game, you kind of there's three different eras, which is something taken from the kind of lost and found system where you, you kind of start in this early era, then you have like a golden age and you kind of have this decline. Um, the one main difference I take, I guess, in the teapot versus kind of other lost and found stuff is try to be a bit more hopeful. So even the declining era is a little bit more. It's a bit of hope. So it depends on the era. In the beginning, you're meeting a lot of people very kind of young in their career or recently drastic changes for them. It's a fresh start. Um, kind of in the, uh, the the golden age era, you're meeting more people well-established in their careers, people that have power or sway or kind of important in this societal way. And then in the last era, the kind of declining era, you're literally with like bandits or someone who just wanders around between town and town or a poet who's not very good at making tea. Like it's it's very, it depends on those ones. So yeah, you know, in the beginning you've got like your a tea monk or uh, a fledgling tea infuser, bright eyed, and in the middle you've got. Um, you know, a team master or an uncle, what it calls like a <laughs> very, very, you know, subtle nod to an inspiration for all of this is Uncle Iroh, but, um, you know, someone a little, a little along in their years and stuff. And that, either yeah, makes, that's... either makes a very delicious tea or it's poisonous. Poison. <laughs> or deadly poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's no deadly poison unless you want there to be, but in this case, <laughs> if you got Iroh, probably. Yeah. Uh, classic. So uh, you, you mentioned that there are some changes upcoming to this, uh, kind of a, a second edition kind of thing. Is that roughly correct? Yeah, so when I did the first, what I'm just calling, I guess, like the first edition of it, I don't really like that term because it's not quite accurate, but um, the first round of it, it was very focused on the getting the game done and kind of getting it done for the game jam. And in a way, I liked it. Um, so 
as with, I think, many projects, I was like, oh, this will be a 15 page document that turned into 30 that, you know, took a lot out of me. And I just kind of took some time away from it. Um, and then with this newer one, what I'm calling the fully steeped version. Um, <laughs> I, I was about to suggest exactly that if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, and uh, my other, my older version is going to be called the slightly steeped. So very good. I'm gonna teabag in for just a minute or two. It's there, <laughs> but it's not fully done. Uh, but yeah, the fully steeped version art, for example, I you know in the beginning it was just what free kind of art I could find, and even then it was mostly just the cover. Um, now I'm working with an artist, um, Zed Nope is their name on Twitter, but um, and they're lovely, and we're working on basically just putting a bunch of art in there uh i'm doing a round of edits because as with anything when you think it's perfect and you've gotten all the grammar done someone else looks at it and goes nope this doesn't make sense you're like yeah no that doesn't make sense i don't know how i did see that um, i i know that feeling far too well <laughs> anyone who's like written anything that's mildly important to be accurate definitely knows that feeling. you're like uh yeah Every time uh, my editor looks at any of my writing, there's always at least one line that's just, Garm, what, what is this? And I'm like, it made sense at the time when it was referring to a section that I cut. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst I've had, actually, was I get, I get this sometimes where a sentence stopped halfway, and I think I finished it in my head. And I, every time I read it, I would just finish it in my head and be like, oh, this is fine. And then I would show it to someone, they're like, <laughs> I feel like there's an important second part to the sentence. And they're right. There is an important second part. Um, but yeah, and I'm also hoping, you know, depending on how the kind of funding goes, to get a physical print going. So, let's see. But. So, uh, what kind of tea would you recommend for this game while playing? Oh dear. Um, so in in true, I have way too many teas. Um, my personal preference, the way I think this would be really cool to play, is to drink a different tea for each era. So um, give like the names of those eras for a bit of context. Just gotta pull them up. But yeah, you've got you know the freshly brewed era. Um, feel like you know a nice slightly waking up but not fully punching you in the face like a green tea or a jasmine tea would be great a um, little bit of honey because i am a heathen who likes sweet teas sorry um but yeah and then a tea well steeped which is that kind of golden era um personal favorite be a chai tea i love i love chai teas they're amazing Spice teas are awesome, so it's it's and it's a very exciting era. So I think that matches it pretty well. And then yeah, um, for the the quiet years, chamomile tea. That's it. Like just chamomile tea, maybe a bit of honey. It's a it's a good calming and kind of almost like it's it's intentionally set up too to almost be a bit reflective and offboarding for you. So a little bit of. Right. De-stressing. Kind of a, a denouement. A denouement tea, yes. Yeah. I think that's the term. I, English class was a long time ago. A falling action. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna nod my head because I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if anyone sees this, it's on you. I, yep, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you'd like to highlight about uh, the teapot? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I think. 